Hello everyone. So in the last episode, we were able to create a web RTC peer and we also emitted an offer to our server. So we mainly created this function here, handle join call. And in this particular video, I want us to complete the peer to peer connection. And then in the next video, we'll be able to show the peer or the video for the other person uh, so far. We are getting the local stream for this user, for this user. And uh, if I happen to call, if I click this to call, we get a call notification here. And you can see we have a video here. And if I happen to answer, you'll see, we also have a video here. So this is the local stream for this user. And this one is for this user. It's the same because I'm using the same camera. And uh, the thing is here, I'm on Chrome. And on one, it's the normal. And then the other, it's on incognito okay because if you use like two tabs for chrome you will complain that uh, the camera is already in use but if you use incognito uh, you can be able to you know show the two videos like that the last step that we did is to emit a web rtc signal to the server so we need to receive this signal or uh, listen to it on the server so here at the root of the application we have server.js and at server.js here is where we had some core events we'll say socket dot on and we will get to listen to a web rtc signal and are uh, very important that um, this must be the same as what we emit here so always make sure that this spelling is the same and if you need to you can even like copy paste that so that uh, you don't miss the spelling. So I copy paste that one. And then right here, we will call on web um, RTC signal function. So we create this function. And on the server, you can see it doesn't complain because uh, we are using JavaScript. If we come now to socket events, we can get to create that particular function. And we'll say on web RTC signal dot RTS. Okay, dot JS. On the server, we'll use JS. And uh, here, all we need to do is to emit an event to the person who called us in this case. And we will forward the SDP data that we had set up. If we come back to socket context, we want to send this data right here to the person who called us okay and uh, another thing that i need to mention is that uh once we get the data on the other person uh we will also emit a web rtc signal back to us that is and that will be the answer so we'll emit back the answer and the answer will contain similar data so this on web rtc signal i uh, will have two parts one is for the person who called us and the other one is for us okay because there will be that back and forth so the first thing that we will do here is to import io so i'll import io and this will be coming from our server file then right here i'll say const on web uh, rtc signal will be equal to we will have an arrow function this arrow function will receive the data and the data is this data right here this particular object is the one that we will receive as data right here okay so here i'll say async and here we will receive that data and we'll do stuff with it and from our here we had specified that the person who emitted this particular event is not the caller so we'll make use of this is caller property to know whether it's the caller who emitted the event or not so in this case, this is not the caller who emitted the event and we'll make use of that right here. So we'll say if data dot is caller, then we'll do stuff right here. Else means that it's the receiver who emitted the event, we'll do other stuff right here. And uh, since it's not the caller who emitted, means that this else is done that will be executed in this case. And we'll say if data dot ongoing call, so here I must have the spelling correct because uh, we are not using TypeScript to double check it. And then here participants and then dot caller dot socket ID exists. So here I'm performing a check to see if we have the caller socket ID. Okay, let me um, first uh, go back a bit. 
Here we have confirmed that it's the receiver who emitted the event and we want to send that event to the person who called us. For us to send that event, we must have the socket ID for that person. And that is why we are checking if we have the caller socket ID. If we do, then we will send uh, that particular event or that particular SGP data to the uh, person who called us, okay? So here we check, do we have data? Dot, I'm going call dot participants dot caller dot socket ID. If we do have that, then we'll be able to send the event to that person and we'll say IO dot two. And right here, we will pass that socket ID and we can just copy this. You could set it to be in a variable if you don't want to repeat yourself so much, but I'll just copy paste there it is and I'll say dot emit and here, I'll invoke that, we will emit the web RTC uh, signal. And um, again, the spelling is very important, signal. And right here, I'll use a comma. And here we will pass the data we want to emit. And I, I think we can just say data because um, this object, yeah, it will be exactly that. So we will emit the data, we don't need to repeat uh, defining the object again. So there is our own web RTC signal and we should come down here and we will say export and default and right here I'll say on web RTC uh, signal. Now I want us to just complete uh, working with this particular function. So we'll also cover here in case the caller is done who emitted the event, then we want to send that event to the receiver. So here we will check if we have the socket ID for the receiver. So we'll just copy paste these right here. They are very, very similar. It's just that here we are sending to the caller, here we will send to the receiver. So if it's the caller who emitted the web RTC signal, uh, we will send this signal to the receiver therefore we check if we have the socket id here for the receiver so receiver again the spelling is uh, very important and i keep messing it up so make sure yours is fine because uh, things might fail to work because of the spelling here and javascript does not double check that but we might get an error maybe when uh, running the application in case of any issue but now right here, we check if we have um, this socket ID for the receiver, then we emit IO.2 socket ID here, basically, then we emit the uh, data using this web RTC signal event. Very nice. So now we are done with this function. We need to come back to this server and we need to import this on web RTC signal. I'll click on that. After clicking at the end, you just hit control space to auto import that particular function just like that. So we have it here. On the client, we need to listen to this particular event. So on socket context, we will listen to web RTC signal, okay? Here we are emitting, but uh, we are not listening to any of that uh, event. I'll come here to the course and I think I can add that particular event right here. Here we had socket.on incoming call. And now we will add another one. We'll say socket.on, we invoke, and we will listen to which event? Web RTC signal. And then at the end here, we will call a function and we'll just say here, complete peer connection. So this is a function that we will use to complete our peer to peer connection and let's go ahead and create this function above our handle join call and after create peer we will come right here so i need to do it after create peer so that create peer is already defined when we need to use it in this particular function because we need to create the peer for the person who called const complete peer connection this will be equal to we can make use of I use callback hook to optimize this and it will receive an arrow function here and a dependency array. Very nice. Just to be done with the dependency array, we'll have local stream, then we'll have create here, 
then we'll have peer and we'll have ongoing call this will be an async function then it will be able to receive several stuff it will receive our connection data and that data is the one that we emit here this data the data is the same same similar as the one that we have on our handle join call don't know if i should show you this data so as you can see we will receive an sdp we will receive ongoing call and is caller so those are what we will receive in our complete peer connection as connection data there and uh, this will be of type uh, i don't think we had a type for this so we will add an object and we'll say sdp will be in this object and it will be of type signal data then we will have ongoing call and it will be of type ongoing call then we will be having is caller and this will be a boolean very nice so those are the things that we receive in this function Note that this is in these brackets, okay? Then at the body, inside these curly brackets, we'll do stuff. Right now, we are executing this function on the person who called us. And when making the call, we had set up the local stream. So first of all, we check, do we still have the local stream going on? So let's say if we don't have the local stream, we want to return, okay? so we can console dot log here and we say missing the local stream and we just immediately return there now right here if we have a peer uh this is now for the case where this is for the case where we receive an answer from the person who called us remember this function will be used by two people both the receiver and the caller what we'll do here is to complete the peer to peer connection and we'll do it like this we'll just say peer dot peer connection if we have signal we will go ahead and say connection data dot sdp so we pass the sdp data for the caller that will complete the peer to peer connection I don't know if that makes sense but uh, once we complete we'll go through the flow of the code and hopefully it will make sense uh once we do that we will immediately return but if we don't have a peer what we will do right here is to emit an event similar to this one okay we will need to create a peer like we did here and uh, we will need to know the participant user in that case now the participant user will be the receiver and then we will emit the event so i could uh, generally copy this code i'll copy and i'll come to this part and i'll paste we'll need to rectify some stuff for example the string here we'll say local stream for the participant to user these will be uh, the receiver so i'll say connection data then dot ongoing call dot participant s the receiver there then here we emit this uh, web rtc signal to the server but now here where we have is caller we'll set that as true so this is the caller emitting this okay and this will be it up to this point maybe i can try to do a quick recap of the flow of what is happening here so the first thing that we do is to call a user so we'll have handle call somewhere handle call handle call that is the beginning of everything so handle call we call and we emit this call event the server we receive the call event and it will call this on call function the on call function uh, will go ahead and emit an incoming call to the person whom we called using their socket id and on incoming call we will receive that or we will resend that on the client the incoming call so on our use effects down here so we listen to incoming call and we will have this on incoming call 
and when we have on incoming call i think we'll set up some state so where is that now function on incoming call we just set up the ongoing call the participants and is ringing property when this is ringing we will see the call notification on our ui and then on the ui we can either hang up or answer if we happen to hang up we just stop everything we haven't implemented hang up but we will do later on but if we happen to answer the call we will call this function handle join call and on handle join call what we will do we will set up the local stream for the receiver remember the receiver is the one who is answering the call so we set up the local stream and then we create the peer for the receiver once we successfully create the peer for the receiver we will emit a web rtc signal this sdp data is for the receiver then we pass the ongoing call and we say that the person who emitted this event is not the caller but the receiver so once we emit this signal this will go to the server and this is listening to that signal or that event and then we call on web rtc signal function which we have just created in this particular episode and this function we get to this point at this point we check is it the caller who uh, emitted that event and in this case it is not the caller so we will execute else here and we will check do we have the socket id for the caller if we do we will emit web rtc signal to the person who called us and what we are doing here we are emitting a web rtc offer to that person so that person uh, we resend this web rtc signal on our socket context and now down here we get the web rtc signal here so we resend to it and then the person who called us will run this function complete peer connection and then we will come to that complete peer connection this function we have created right now and we'll check if we already have our local stream if we do we continue if we have a peer in this case we will not have a peer okay because uh, this peer that we had set up is for the receiver but here now the caller is the one executing this function we will not have the peer so we'll skip this if statement and we'll come here we will create the peer now for these um the, for the person who called once we create the peer we will set the peer to our state so peer connection to be this peer the participant user and then we will have the stream the stream will be updated in create peer remember we were listening to some events you can check the last episode for that and then the person who called us will emit web rtc signal again and in this case we will specify that the person who emitted this event is the caller the person who called us in the very first time now again back to the server listen to that event on web rtc we come back here then now here we'll check is it the caller who emitted the event and we'll see yes it's the caller now we will not execute else but we will execute this part of the code and in this case we will emit web rtc signal to the receiver okay to the person who emitted the offer now we emit for them an answer we come back now to socket context and now here we listen to web rtc signal again web rtc signal and we will call complete peer connection again now in complete peer connection let's come here in complete peer connection we will check do we have the local stream we'll see we do have the local stream do we have peer in state and here now we will see that we have a peer in state and when we have a peer in state we will complete the peer to peer connection and we will return we will not execute this now once this connection is going that is it now the ice servers will handle the rest will handle the uh, video and audio uh, sharing okay they will start now talking and so on but we still have a step that remains where we need to show the other peer on our ui right now on the ui we are just showing the local stream so i'll see you on the next video where we will cover that if you are enjoying my content remember to subscribe to support my content and also share with your friends who also want to learn uh, next.js react and so on